Hello, students and educators. We are so excited to have you join us for Career Exposure Week. My name is Chelsea Hunt, and I am the Executive Director of Work-Based Learning and Industry Engagement at the State Department. I will be your moderator for this session. We will hear from our guest speaker, Jessica Stewart, Client Services Manager at Oklahoma Center for the Advancement of Science and Technology, fondly known as OCAST. And then we will have a Q&A session that I will help field any questions to Jessica. This session is being recorded and will be archived within the Oklahoma Career Exposure Week online module. Also, we will send out links to the recorded session to everyone who registered today. Please join me in welcoming Jessica Stewart, Client Services Manager at Oklahoma Center for the Advancement of Science and Technology. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, so wonderful to be here with everyone this morning coming to you from my home office. Uh, I'm currently in uh, just outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma, but I am based in the Oklahoma City area and then I work statewide in my position with OCAST. So today I want to talk to everyone about seeing yourself in science and technology or engineering or math or something, any, anything related to science and tech. Um, we'll talk a little bit about biosciences as well and what that looks like in Oklahoma. But um, I, I chose this topic because science and technology wasn't something I saw myself going into when I was growing up. And um, I want to talk a little bit about how I ended up here and and how much fun it's been um, and give you guys some things to think about as well as you're thinking about careers and science and technology and what to major in if you're going to college and internships and those kinds of things. So to give you a little bit about me and my career journey, I, um, my parents were not really um, high achieving college uh, parents. My, my dad actually didn't ever graduate high school um, because at the age of 16, he had to take care of his siblings. He had four other siblings and his mom was not well. And so he got a job at 16 and ended up having to drop out of high school and pursue a career to be able to, to buy food and, and take care of his younger siblings. So um, he ended up working at a bread bakery um, and when I look back at it now, when I was a child, I didn't realize both of my parents kind of had a science and math background due to the vocations that they ended up going into. Um, so my dad had to learn about baking bread, about the chemical reactions that were needed to produce that perfect loaf of beautiful bread coming off of the equipment. And he also had to continue learning about the equipment that, um, that produced the bread. They had obviously equipment upgrades and technology upgrades. He worked there his entire life from the time he was 16 until the time he retired in his in his 50s. So um, he there were a lot of technology upgrades as he was working there and moving around through different departments at the bakery. And then my mom was a uh, registered nurse and she had her associate's degree from a community college. Um, so she did love biology and she tried to get me interested in biology as well, but it just wasn't something that was that interesting to me at the time. So I don't really consider myself having a, a strong science and math background. I didn't do well in math when I was in, uh, in middle and high school. Um, in fact, I was afraid that my math scores when I took the ACT were going to stop me from being able to attend college because they were so horrible. Um, and so uh, I, I didn't see myself as going into a science and math discipline moving forward. So my career goals growing up, I. I really liked writing. I loved English. I had pen pals. Um, when the internet was developed, I started making websites and web pages to be able to talk about the, I had horses and, and dogs and I wanted to tell the world about um, my pets and, and what I did with them. And I showed horses and things like that. And so I was, I was a storyteller when, growing up and that's what I really liked to do. And so moving forward and looking at what I wanted to major in going into college, um, I was looking at being a writer. I thought maybe I would be a librarian. I considered being a veterinarian, but again, because I didn't really care for science and math that much, it wasn't something that I thought I would be good at. I was really worried about what am I going to be good at um, in addition to what I liked. 
And so after taking a lot of different classes and taking a lot of different courses in college, I ended up earning degrees in communications and educational technology. And my communications degree actually was in agricultural communications. So it had a bit of a science background. I had to take courses such as food science and animal science, but still I never saw myself as being in a science and technology career. I thought I was going to move on to being a magazine publisher or a director of marketing. Um, and that, that was really my career goal. And throughout the years after I graduated, um, I ended up working first in 4-H youth development and working as a marketing and communications uh, campaign manager. And then I ended up kind of somehow my, my life took me to more of a science-based um, department that I worked in at Oklahoma State University where I was forming my, my career. And so I ended up working within um, engineering departments. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a few minutes. But now I work for the Oklahoma Center for the Advancement of Science and Technology. And that is a, a group that is actually a um, it was started by the state legislature um, to be able to advance science and technology and encourage and foster the development of innovation in Oklahoma. Um, Oklahoma, of course, has some very strong um, industry, economic industry areas, such as energy and oil and gas. Um, and we encourage diversification of the economy uh, with new technologies and innovations to keep Oklahoma strong in the areas of the economy so that there's plenty of jobs, there's plenty of good, good paying jobs in the state. And so that is one of the things that I get to do is work with people across the state um, with, their, with their science and technology endeavors. Um, we work very closely with manufacturers as well, um, startups and entrepreneurs and um, all the people who are trying to develop new technologies to make our lives easier and better and safer. So um, to talk a little bit about why science and technology. Um, so there, are the, the standard spiel that you will hear about why science and technology is something you should get involved in is that there are so many jobs in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, there are, they're growing at a great rate. Um, jobs in science, technology, engineering, math are expected to continue to grow, some by up to 28% um, in the next two to four years um, as projected by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, and so you'll find as, uh, you know, as science and technology continues to develop, there needs to be more, or, or as technologies continue to develop, there's more and more science and technology that's developed as a, as kind of a byproduct because um, it, it just keeps compounding on itself. And as people come up with new ways to make, like I said, our lives easier and safer or in, things such as a pandemic, um, lots of science and technology comes into play. And so we're seeing those jobs continue to grow. There are new, you know, thousands of new phone applications that are developed each year. There are thousands of new safety uh, innovations that are developed each year. In one of my previous positions, I got to work with inventors uh, who came to me with their ideas and I helped evaluate those ideas with them and look at how we could help them get to the next step for their invention. Um, and I would see 80 Oklahoma inventors a year who were bringing me these ideas. Um, and so there, there's a lot of innovation in Oklahoma. Um, you know, they like to talk about the East and West Coasts and Texas having lots of innovation, but Oklahoma just here in our own state has so many different new and new ideas. Um, you know, you may have heard of uh, Emmy Labs, who's been in the news a lot because of their great um, COVID vaccination uh, clinics that they've been having and other, other innovations that they had. So we have a lot going on just within Oklahoma, a lot of exciting things going on. And it's only when you start getting involved with some of those companies and some of those groups and, and there are lots of organizations, there's women in technology organizations, there's computer coding organizations. When you start getting involved with those, you realize just how much is really going on in Oklahoma. But um, STEM related positions also typically pay more than non STEM related positions. Um, sometimes STEM related positions uh, will pay almost double um, what your average industry 
uh, non-STEM position will pay. And so if, if uh, money is something that uh, is a motivator for you, that can be something that might make it more interesting for you. Um, but one thing I want to point out about STEM in o STEM related positions and the work that's being done in Oklahoma is that it's really more of a um, giving back to the community-based endeavor. Um, one thing that I noticed as a theme with all of, with OSU and OU faculty, um, with the inventors in the state, is they're really trying to come up with, with things that will make our lives so much better, so much easier. Um, they're, help, they're wanting to help other Oklahomans. It's Oklahomans helping Oklahomans through technology development, which was something that I thought was really interesting when I got into that area. Um, and then also, uh, not, you know, not all STEM related positions require a bachelor's degree, which I think is something that is really important to emphasize. Um, there are many programs, many jobs in Oklahoma even that uh, it might require a certification program, but it's not something that would require a four year bachelor's degree. Um, because I know for me, um, I took the long route through college. I ended up being in college for six years because I ended up changing my major because I didn't know quite what I was wanting to do. Um, I don't recommend taking that route, um, but you know, some of us take a little bit longer to figure out what we wanted to do. And that was definitely me. I took, I did take all kinds of science classes um, and I did well in them, but they just didn't get me excited at the time. And so um, for those of you who are, who are thinking, oh, well, I'm not sure I want to spend four years in college after graduating high school. Uh, as There are careers such as web design, um, computer programming often doesn't require a bachelor's degree. They want hands-on experience um, from people who have been working on computers and, and understand uh, the logic that computers use you know, for software programming. And then one of the things that is was most exciting for me as I was starting to be more involved in engineering departments um, at Oklahoma State University was that there was always something new and interesting. There was so much diversity of projects, of knowledge. I like to learn. That's what I learned about myself is, so, is that I wanted to learn more about things. And so as I was working with engineering staff and I was the only non-engineer there. So I was surrounded by everyone else who was, who was used to talking in certain language, um, had this you know, knowledge ahead of time that, um, that I didn't have. And so they had to really teach me about things such as thermodynamics and fluid flow and mechanical engineering design. And I learned all of these things and, and thought, wow, this is really interesting. And why didn't I think about doing these things or, or didn't even look at engineering when I was going into into college. Um, and it's simply because I didn't have the experience. I didn't know anybody who was an engineer who was able to tell me, you know, here's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so gaining that kind of day-to-day um, -day experience can be really helpful if you are thinking, well, I don't know if, if a science and technology job is for me, or if I don't know if I want to be an engineer. Um, there are ways to get that experience that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's always something new and interesting. There's always, it's fun to see something start. We would have groups who will bring things to us. Um, that's at, they, they've drawn it up on a napkin and they say, this is how I want it to work. And I would be able to watch that engineer. And in some cases, these were engineering students um, who would bring that idea to life. So they would actually create it first digitally and then we would prototype it. Um, and be able to see this, this product or this idea um, that this person wanted to create. And so that was something that was really, really spoke to me um, and was something that was just really gave me the passion for being involved in science and technology because um, it was something new. It was always changing. There were always new things to learn and that really appealed to me. Um, and, and the other thing is it's very hands-on um, in the area I was in in new product development and engineering, you know, you were able to actually handle the product after it was made. And so that's something that's very appealing when you've created it um, out of, you know, almost seems like thin air. And then all of a sudden you have something that's in hand that's been prototyped that you can look at and, and work through. Um, and so it's really fun to see those innovations happen from start to finish. And these are all, you know, experiences that I, I don't think I would have had, and I, I don't know where I, where I would have 
ended up if I hadn't had those experiences, I certainly wouldn't be at OCAS talking about um, science and technology careers and, and how much fun it is to be involved in them. So one thing I do want to discuss too, we, we talk about, um, you know, I think when you hear STEM, um, you do think of that typical engineer position, or you think of that typical chemist, um, you know, in a lab, in, a, in that kind of situation. And there are so many other kinds of careers that, are, that can be STEM careers, um, from graphic design, as I mentioned, to web page design, um, you know, you could be nutritionists and dietitians. There are material scientists who come up with with new ways of, of creating materials that are lighter weight and are safer um, for cars and airplanes and um, battery materials um, that will help batteries to last longer, for example, for your hybrid and electric, electric vehicles. And those are all growing in Oklahoma. Those are all areas that are um, really expanding as far as the job opportunities and the companies that are both starting and moving to Oklahoma that are offering those opportunities. Obviously water resource specialists because water is such an important um, part, you know, thing to Oklahoma. Wildlife biologists and obviously the engineers, the chemists, the app developers, architects, accountants, um, UAV pilots. UAV is huge in Oklahoma and there are lots of really fun opportunities. There's the unmanned um, unmanned systems research institute at OSU and OU has several uh, groups as well that concern UAV um, so that you can actually get involved and get hands-on and design UAVs um, if you go into those programs. And so there are also, um, you know, there are careers in STEM that are not directly related to the science and technology side of it, sort of like in my position where I'm really an advocate for science and technology. Um, and, and those people are really needed as well. So for those um, who think, you know, STEM isn't their thing. Science and technology needs the storytellers. It needs the project managers. It needs those who like working with the human resources, the employees at the science and technology company or research lab and managers. It needs leaders from all backgrounds to bring new ideas and input. Um, I was, I've been very fortunate in that the engineers I worked with were open-minded. And so me being the, the one non-engineer going, asking questions and saying, well, why would you do it that way? Um, which made them think about why are we doing it that way? And so science and technology and engineering, they all need those people. So even if you are not looking at a science and, and math related major, um, there is probably a place for you in, in a STEM career um, just because they need more than just scientists in STEM. Um, there's data analysis. Teachers obviously are critical to um, science, technology, engineering, and math. They, we need people who can teach other people science and tech. Uh, marketing and sales. When I look at this list and think through in a new product development situation with the engineers, it wasn't just the engineers who were needed to develop that new product. We needed storytellers to be able to market that product. We needed accountants and people who were good with numbers and financial information to determine how is this product, you know, how are we going to make money on this product? Um, we needed the human resource coordinators to determine who needs to be involved on this product, who, who are we going to be hiring to be able to continue manufacturing this product. Um, we needed the data analysis, we needed the marketing and sales. There's, there's more than just an engineer when it comes to many of these kinds of, of processes for developing products and and developing new innovations in the labs and developing new, um, you know, new therapeutic drugs for to, to combat um, diseases. And so there's a place for you in science and tech, even if science and math are not really your thing in, in school, even if you're not um, that great at, at math. I had to take three remedial college classes in math in order to get into my base level calculus class. And then once I got there, um, I was fortunate that I had faculty who believed that um, I would be successful and was able to take my calculus class and, and do very well in it and then move on and, and believe, yeah, I can, I can be in, um, you know, I can do math um, because that was just such a struggle for me. 
Now, one thing that I would say is that was the most instrumental thing for me in getting into um, science and technology as a career was having internships in engineering departments um, at the university I attended. And so um, to talk about, you know, what is an internship? An internship um, can be paid or unpaid. And it's basically a work experience that you have with either a company or a lot of universities offer internships. Um, and it provides, um, in some cases, it will provide funding to you so you get paid on an hourly or a stipend wage. Um, and it gives you hands-on experience in the area that you are wanting to uh, wanting to potent, you know, major in or, or are interested in having a career in. So for example, in one of my previous roles, we had engineering, mechanical engineering internships. And so students would work with us um, and get to work on actual projects with an engineering mentor who was one of our full-time staff. Um, and they provided, they got to work on the project either in summer or a semester, and they would work directly with the client on developing their product. So they would, they would communicate with the client and learn what the client wanted, what they wanted designed, and then the engineering intern would actually draw and design that product for the client and work with the client on developing what that product needed to look like. Once that product was finished, the engineering intern would work um, with, with the client on, on finalizing the drawings, and then they would actually build and create it um, and so that they could look at it in person, or if it was a working prototype, we would build it so that the, the person, the client could actually test it um, if testing was involved. And so the intern got a really fantastic experience working with other people and learning how to design something um, based on the specifications that the client provided. And they got a really fantastic experience in that actual hands-on technical knowledge that they needed guided by an engineer um, who was in the department. And so I also benefited from having internships um, as a marketing and communications uh, undergrad, I had internships, as I said, at, at some engineering departments. One was the biosystems and agricultural engineering department at uh, Oklahoma State University, and there I was a newsletter intern. But what I, in addition to just designing that newsletter, I learned about the entire engineering department and what each faculty member was working on. There was water research, there was um, biomass for, for new sources of energy research happening. There was food um, grain storage research on how to keep grain uh, in the silos, how to, how to be able to move it around in the silos such that it would not mold and there wouldn't be quality problems. I learned all kinds of things about the engineering department as a result of being in the, in the department writing about these things. So um, and then the second internship I had was at the New Product Development Center, which is where I ended up working full time later on for eight years um, and really getting a passion for it because I started as a marketing and communications intern there. But again, I got to work with clients on their marketing and communications plans and campaigns. I got to write press releases and design their logos and things like that for them. I designed websites for them. But what that introduced me to was science and technology and manufacturing in Oklahoma because those were our clients. And so I got to learn about all of these interesting things that were going on in the state. And that's what really started my passion for wanting to work with science and technology in Oklahoma and stay in Oklahoma because I was originally from Texas. Um, and I wanted to stay here because the passion for the people and the, and the, the passion they had just kept me going too. And so um, that was something that was just really pivotal for me was interning. Um, and so I would say that's why it's important is that you get to learn so many new things. You get to learn not only what you might really like doing, maybe you learn a little bit about what you don't like doing. Maybe you take an internship one summer and find out, oh, that, you know, I did that project at this company and that just really wasn't for me. And that's okay too, because then you know that when you're looking for a full-time career after you, after you graduate or after you finish a certification program, whatever it is that you're working on to further your education, you have a better idea of what it is that you're going to like doing, what you're really good at doing, and the comp kind of companies that you're interested in working for and the kind of people you're interested in working with because every company has a little bit different culture and um, sometimes 
you find out you fit in better with some, some company cultures than others. One thing um, to mention too is that science and technology internships pay very well, just like later on when you get a science and technology related career, um, the science and technology internships pay well. So for example, OCAS, the, the group I work with, offers funding to companies um, that allows them to start their internship programs if they want to do so. And the wages that the companies are asked to pay their interns is 18 to $22 an hour. So it is completely, um, completely feasible for an intern over a summer to make about $12,000 um, over that summer to help pay for you know, living costs, um, college costs, tuition, all of those kinds of things. And so having an internship can help you very much financially through your college career as well. Um, and so those can be really important aspects also. So if you're wondering how do you find an internship, um, if you're at a university, career fairs are often a great place to find an internship. Um, typically universities will offer those anywhere from one to three times a year um, and employers will come in and you can talk to those employers about what opportunities they have. That is often what um, previously our engineering interns did when they were looking for external internships um, to go work at different companies. Um, university career services often have companies that come to them. Um, you can always ask a local company you're interested in if they have internship opportunities. You know, maybe you live in an area and there's a, a company that you that sounds like it might do some neat things um, and you want to intern there potentially, go and ask. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask what kind of opportunities they have. And if they haven't thought about it before, maybe you're the first one who gets them to consider hiring an intern so that they can pass on some of their interesting knowledge to you. Um, career tech centers are a fantastic method of finding apprenticeship and uh, internship opportunities. And then the Oklahoma Works, um, of course, is, is something that, that is a great, uh, great resource as well. Now, one thing um, to talk a little bit about bioscience, since that was the one of the topics, um, there are 297 bioscience startups and established companies in Oklahoma. So bioscience is a rapidly growing field in Oklahoma and bioscience covers, um, Emmy Labs in, is an example of a bioscience related group. Um, you know, bioscience kind of covers a vast area, um, everything from medical device um, innovation to therapeutic, what they call therapeutics, um, which is sort of medicines and, and things like that, um, you know, to agricultural related uh, improvements, um, maybe plant genetic improvements or, or other items that, that contribute to, to improving agriculture, improving animal life, improving human life. Um, Another thing is that OCAST over the years has funded um, 2,700 bioscience related projects. So again, bioscience is a rapidly growing field. Um, and in the, you know, if, if you're interested further in bioscience related companies in Oklahoma, um, my contact information is on the last slide of this presentation and I would be more than happy to connect you um, with, with whoever uh, might be interested in, in reaching out to some of the bioscience companies that we have in Oklahoma. Um, and then OS, OU and OSU, of course, both have health science centers. Um, there's the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation that conducts bioscience related research. There are lots and lots of, of opportunities in Oklahoma for um, bioscience related work. One last thing, as I know I'm at my time, we do have what's called the Innovate That podcast that our Lieutenant Governor um, has, and he talks to some of the innovators in Oklahoma. And so we would love for you to listen to the Innovate That podcast uh, if you get a chance and you can visit that. Uh, it's available on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or Podbean. Um, and you can visit the website here, innovatethat.podbean.com and listen to some of the companies that are innovating in Oklahoma. So with that, I will say thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate your time today and I'd love to answer any questions that you might have.
Thank you so much, Jessica. That was some, a wealth of knowledge and just to have more exposure into STEM careers and of course, bioscience. And uh, just thank you so very much. Um, do we have any questions today from any of our students? I know we have um, Inside Oklahoma, Bray Doyle, Dell, Dove, um, and then also Nawada Public Schools and Newcastle. I hope I hit everybody, but are there any questions for today? You can add them in the chat or you can unmute your mics. And Jessica, we may not have any questions, but again, you've you've shared a wealth of knowledge, but I, I don't want to cut someone off if there are questions. I have a question. I'm the college and career advisor at Newcastle. Uh, we, I, you mentioned some companies that offer internships. We are growing our internship program, and I would love to get information on some companies that are willing to have high school students come intern with them. We're really close to the metro, especially. So do you have any recommendations of who I could reach out to? Um, actually, I would be happy to work with you um, with that. If you want to contact me, I would, we can figure out who um, I can, I have been with OCAST just for about two months now. So I'm still learning who all the companies are, but I would love to connect you with the resources that you need for that. Um, Great. So um, if you I'll, want to, I'll, I'll email I'll put, you, is that okay? Yeah, if you'll email me, that would be great. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jessica. You're welcome. And Jessica, we have a, a question from Port Supply, and forgive me, Port Supply, for not giving a shout out. Uh, they are with us today. This is the fifth grade class, and they yes. want to know uh, what a UAV is. Oh, sure. So a UAV is an unmanned aerial vehicle. So it's it's nobody's in it. Um, you it's a they're typically smaller um, flying. So if you think of a uh, for example, like a radio controlled airplane, but more sophisticated. Um, they, they are able to have sensors and certain technologies on them to be able to help. Um, for example, they use UAVs sometimes for weather um, to sense things that are, that are atmospheric conditions and be able to help project, um, you know, predict what's going to happen with our weather. Um, they use them for examining, I know some of the electric co-ops in the state are using them to examine power poles. They have cameras mounted on the unmanned aerial vehicle and they're able to um, look at the, you know, what condition the power pole is in to make sure that it's safe and, and still in good condition so that they don't need to replace it. Um, they're using drone, they're also called drones. Um, sometimes you hear them called that. Um, and they are also using them for agriculture to be able to fly over large, large crop fields and examine what that crop looks like from a from a higher perspective to be able to see if there are areas of crops that are, um, you know, having issues or if there are problems with with water or temperature. Um, and so it's basically a really cool flying machine <laughs> that is able to sense things and 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 give us a different view of things in a lot of times and they're looking at all different applications for them. Very nice. Are there any further questions for Jessica today? Give it a few more seconds. And if not, um, I went ahead and added and just encourage you all to join us tomorrow. We're going to hear about healthcare careers. Um, and I added the links to the registration so that you can get access to those as well if you haven't um, registered for all of the sessions. Well, Jessica, it doesn't seem like we have any further questions. Again, I want to thank you so very much for being here with us today and just, again, sharing some exploration pieces for STEM careers and bioscience careers. And uh, again, thank you for your wealth of knowledge. And thank you for all of our school districts and students who were able to join for this session. And again, we hope you're able to join us back tomorrow um, at 11 o'clock. We'll have that session. So uh, we will see you all uh, tomorrow. And thank you once more. Thank you. Everybody have a great day.